Although some contest squirmy worm style patterns push the fly definition envelope, there is no denying their effectiveness. My offering in the squirmy worm category, the cola worm, is fast becoming one of my favorite bloodworm or coronamid larva patterns. It works that good. Here are the materials you will need to create your own six pack of cola worms. So let's throw my hat into the squirmy wormy ring. The cola worm, my variation of the venerable squirmy wormy. When I showed this uh, pattern up on my social media feeds, it caused a little bit of a stir. Everybody was interested, so here it is. Into the jaws of the vise, I've placed a Daiichi 1120 number 10. Probably the size I tie it in most. I also tie it in 12s down to 14s if you wish, but the big sizes work just fine. Onto the shank, I slid a hot orange bead, either tungsten or brass, your choice. The hot orange works really well. And you can also, originally I tied the fly with red as well, hence the cola worm. It's all red like a Coca-Cola can. Uh, the choice is up to yours. I tie them in both colorations. The interesting thing about the bead is always slide the bead. Most times if you watch my videos, I'm a big proponent of sliding the narrow end of the bead against the hook eye to avoid obscuring the hook eye, but we're going to use the bead to help gather the squirmy worming material. It's a little unruly. So in this instance, I actually reverse that theory by tying the wide end of the tapered bead towards the hook eye. So we've got that on. I'm going to slide it back out of the way. For thread, I'm using 140 denier UTC because I want nice flat wraps so I don't accidentally cut the squirmy wormy material. The stuff is a little unruly to work with, but the fish love it. So we're just going to get a base of thread tied down, come in, trim off that excess, a couple more wraps to cover up that tie off, back up to the hook eye, and now we're going to take our body material and tail material, a little antenna, whatever you want to call it, sticking out in front, appendage. Uh, it's tied out of squirmy wormy material in blood worm red. There's uh, worm brown, uh, other colorations as well that work equally well, but I use this blood worm red most often. And here's the stuff right here. It's a little unruly. So what we've got to do is I want to tie in a length that sticks out over the hook eye about the shank length long. So I'm going to come up and place soft, progressively tighter wraps to get this in place. If you go tight right away, the thread torque will roll it all over the place and you'll have your front part sticking out at all weird angles. And once I'm happy I've got it pulled tied in, I'm just going to Come in, pull on it a bit to reduce bulk, and it broke away in that case. Or you can use a pair of scissors. Now I'm just going to carefully whip finish. This is much like tying, you've seen me before, tying gills on coronamids. So we're just going to whip finish, trim away the excess. And this is a step if you're going to tie a lot of squirmy wormies that you could do on bulk. Just put a lot of these appendages out front and then put your beads on and finish the rest of the fly. And now we're going to take our bead and because we've got that tapered end it's going to help control that front portion sticking out over the hook eye. We're going to reattach our tying thread directly behind the bead, work it down the shank, just get past the hook point here and I'll trim off the excess and then we'll carry this down just into the bend, about even with the back of that crushed down barb. I'm just going to tie in the tail, if you want to call it that. We're just going to take that about the shank length long. We're going to put one, not letting go of it, two wraps, maybe one more for luck. I don't want to knock the, the tail out of position. And now I'm just going to lift this back out of the way place a few wraps to push it back a little bit. OK, 
careful of that hook point and then work that tying thread right up behind the bead. To form the body we're just going to wrap this excess forward. Just pulling on it to reduce bulk a little bit, add a little segmentation. Try to make it as even as you can, but again, this stuff is unruly. It's got a mind of its own. And we're just going to wind that right up. You can't pull too tight because you'll actually break it. And then we're going to push that right, place a few wraps. Because whenever you tie this off, there's always a little bit of retraction or contraction of the materials. And it sort of jumps back a little bit. So we're going to place a couple of wraps over top. A couple of wraps in front. Reach in, pull on it to reduce bulk. Snip away the excess. Pull down. I'm going to spin this thread counterclockwise. That'll take any of the twist we put in it, in it out and help flatten our wraps. And then we're just going to whip finish. And build up a wide whip finish area. And trim. And believe it or not, this fly is done. If you, uh, you can add a little adjustment, I think that front section's a bit long, although longer sections tend to jiggle a little better. But I can come in and sort of trim them even. And there you go. The finished squirmy wormy. There's something about this fly. It jiggles and bounces. A couple of important things. First of all, this fly is simple and easy to tie. It's not durable. The fish in 510 fish are going to chew the tail and the, and the front section off. Uh, even sever through. You can't use any coatings on this fly. Uh, super glue, especially even the uh, UV clear fly finish I like to use, it just flakes off after a while. The other cements will react and eat into this. The good thing, it doesn't take a long time to tie. You can bang off a lot of these in, in short order and have a good arsenal uh, to deal with. But it's a great fly, not only on rivers for imitating on chronomid larvae, but if you're drifting nymphs and uh, um, larva, pupa, and San Juan worms. This is a great San Juan worm imitation. The fish just love it. So there you go, the finished cola worm. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you will find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online still water fly fishing store. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. While you're visiting my site, please join my mailing list to receive my educational newsletters. You can also follow me through my social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. Please take the time to watch my other videos as well. Thanks for watching.